wanna end me. relationship and the reason I want to make this video now is because I mean I just want to be ahead with this YouTube stuff I already have two videos recorded and I already got a, I already got a few videos planned that aren't recorded yet that are involving me and my boyfriend but what I want to talk about now is giving you guys advice and on the things that I've learned from this relationship so far so one thing that I learned about this relationship and things that I've done different and things that I've done different. When I first came into this relationship, I put all of my pride aside. I put all of my doubts to the side. I didn't want those things to ruin my happiness at this point. And um, when I say I didn't want those things to ruin my happiness, you just don't want to bring in things. You don't want to bring in insecurities. You don't want to bring in doubts. You always try to think, before you get into a relationship, ask yourself, are you emotionally stable to move on? And when I say that, what I mean is, are you stuck on someone? Are you, do you still have feelings for someone else? Don't go to a relationship because you're trying to get over someone. Make sure that you are where you want to be and your mindset mentally, you are ready and emotionally ready for a relationship. <sighs> Another thing that I've learned with this relationship that I learned from my uncle, he told me the other day. Um... He told me that you cannot go into a relationship expecting your significant other to be like you. You can't look at things that your significant other does and think that you know them. They may not react to things the same way that you do. That does not mean that they love you any less. As far as my relationship, my boyfriend would always tell me that I'm not as affectionate. But over the past couple of years, I've lost more than, more than seven people in a row. And on top of that, I've lost my mother. And I didn't really get much affection from my father because he was always working or just in the streets growing up. So I'm not really affectionate. I'm not the type of guy to be like kissing all of you and be like, oh my God, I love you and things like that. But the thing is, at the same time, I have so much love to give. So much love to give. And it does not mean that I don't, that I love him any less just because I'm not as affectionate as him. So that's what he's understanding. You know, at first I thought it was, you may, maybe he was um, trying to build me out to be a woman. I thought that's what he was doing. He was like, you're not affectionate enough. That means you don't want me. And, I'm, and then the thing is, I know that I want him. And in my head, I feel like I'm showing it. But when my uncle pointed out to me, he was like, um, you can't expect your significant other to react to things the way you do. Because everyone is different. Everyone has went through different things. He said that to me. <sighs> my mind is really rambling. I know we were talking about my uncle, but it was something I was about to say that he told me that stood out. I just can't think of it right now because my damn mind, that we got my damn mind rambling. Expectations kill relationships. Can't expect your other, this is what it was. So three minutes of thinking um the love that you give the other may not be your significant other may not be capable of giving that same love that does not mean that your significant other does not love you any less it simply means that it's just different and we show affection differently and i feel like that was something i learned in my relationship also another thing that i've learned in this relationship to also um, one thing that has to be valued is your, your significant other's peace of mind. If you can avoid stressing your significant other out or avoid him, you know, like overthinking things, you should do that at all costs because your peace of mind and the way that your significant other thinks plays a big part in a relationship. Like a problem that I had in this relationship was me and my boyfriend, we would get into it, and though I would come to him with a problem, you know, it was usually me starting off the argument, and I would come to him to get no response, leaving me in a, in a place thinking like, wow, he doesn't care. 
So the next day or later that day, you know, everything's back to normal. We're talking to each other. And then, you know, all of a sudden I drift back into, I drift back into the past. And the reason I drift back into the past is because that, that situation was never, that situation was never talked about or came to a resolution. So I could not move on. Though I was trying, and then my, my thing is, you cannot heal pretending that you're not hurt. So what I was doing is I would bring up a certain situation that bothered me, bring it to him. We get into it or whatever. We start talking the next day or whatever. We're back talking and you no, know, it, it affects the sex and everything. That's something that I really, really, really learned. Um, if I am upset with you, if you have made me mad, if I am sad with you, it affects my sexual attraction to you and to my, my own significant other. People don't think about things like that. But I noticed this when most of the time we, when it was situations that were balled up and were never, had never came to a head or whatever and never had a resolution, I, um, I was set on them. So whenever it was time for me to like be affectionate or whenever a situation came up or something didn't add up to me, I would drift back into that place of confusion. Which then drafted me to not like be as affectionate as I was before. And also just drafted me to close down all of my affection as a whole. So when it came to sex, I didn't even crave it for a period of time. And because I was just upset with him. So when I say that is when I was upset, I didn't want I didn't want sex. <laughs> One thing that I do, I, and another thing, some more things that I've learned also. Um, relationships, they take sacrifice. You have to understand it. Never take jabs at your significant other because you know, you know, a lot of people, you know, you get angry and we like to throw jabs at each other. Don't do that. Don't do stuff like that. We're in that, we're in that period where, you know, people are breaking up with people like back to back over small things. You stand on what you believe. I stand. There's a lot of things that I stand on. There's a lot of small things that can tear me away from someone just because I stand on them. And one of the things is feeling like you care. If I don't feel like you care, you're going to get the same reaction as if you cheated on me. I'm going to leave. That is something that I strongly stand on. If I feel like you don't care, I don't feel like I should be in a relationship. Like, period. Like It's small things that people, you know, people always try to like, Try to um, leave relationships because people cheat or something. No. You need to think about what you want out of a relationship. And if he's not giving you that, then you need to leave. You need to leave and you don't need to. You don't need to look back. You never want to look back to what to what um, hurt you. Never go back to what hurt you. And my thing is, also, at the same time, before you make that decision, ask yourself, are you positive in this decision? And are you making the best decision? And the decision, if you feel like, if you feel like the decision, um, the decision is wrong, and then at the same time you feel like it's right, just think about it more. The decision should not be made within a couple of days. It takes a minute, and it takes maybe even months, weeks, or maybe even a year. You may be feeling like things aren't improving. I strongly feel like if you had this strong affection for someone, it does, it should never take a day or two to decide that you don't want to be with them. Unless they cheat or something. Or something like that. But my thing is, when you ask yourself, um, when he's not, he or she is not doing, upholding the guy that you expect them to be. When they're not upholding the guy that you expect them to be. You ask yourself, can I stick around for this to grow? Do I trust in the process? Because you have to trust in the process. Everything is not, relationships are not perfect. Things are going to go wrong. You know, I've had situations where I feel like it was over and, you know, it wasn't my choice, my choice to continue, you know. My thing is because I put so much into this relationship. This relationship is one of the most solid most solid relationships I've ever had. And one of the relationships that I've done literally, literally almost everything perfect to a T. Almost. 
But I've put so much into this relationship and I have so much faith in it that, and I trust in the process. I know that relationships aren't perfect. I know that guys aren't perfect and I know that we both are two different people. So just because I wake up every morning and take some good morning does not mean that I expect him to do that. I do not expect him to do that. So what my saying is with those things, relationships, one thing that I can take out throughout this whole video is that trust in the process. Stick around. Stick around. Work hard. Don't let that street shit, don't let that, don't contribute that street shit into your, into your circle. Don't look for things because if it's done in the dark, it will come to light. And I swear, I swear, I stand on that. I stand on that. Don't look because you're going to scratch yourself out and more than likely, you're going to find. So, you want to save yourself doing it, you know, look, 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 if you feel that you need to, if you look at, if you feel that you need to, my thing is me and my boyfriend, we have passwords to each other's phone, I go through his or whatever, I go through his, like, not, not that much, because at the same time, I really don't give a fuck, my thing is, I really stand on that if it's mine, then I'm not going to um, have any secrets, like, I really, I love my boyfriend to the you know, to the morning back. And it's going to be six months in a couple of days. And I promise you, like, I trust in the process and I trust that everything happens for a reason. So if, you know, something were to happen where, you know, he would cheat on me or something like that, of course I would be upset, but I would literally take my L and step and I would not backtrack. I would not backtrack. I have to, you know, go through struggles of letting going back on my love, going back on everything, and taking my L and step. I definitely don't want to stick around for things to happen again. And you know, maybe, maybe, it's always up to you. It's always up to you. My thing is, if someone cheats on you and you allow yourself to go back in it, that is the risk that you are taking again. My thing, and my thing is, people. some people learn through things. Some people learn through cheating or whatever, and they may not ever do it again. But the thing is, you never know the outcome if you put yourself back in it. Make sure that when you put yourself back in it, you're putting yourself back in it as if that never happened. You chose to continue. Don't drag that along with you because it's only going to, that's toxic. That's toxic as fuck. Well. If you're going to move on, move on. The situation can be discussed, but it should it should not be when y'all come to your resolution and decide that you're going to try this and try to build something, don't bring back that toxic energy back up there. Erase it and continue from there. Because if you bring that in, you're gonna always dwell on it. You're gonna always just think about it. Like don't do that. It's gone, it's toxic, and it's not gonna, it's not gonna bring you up. It's not gonna make the relationship grow. You know? And not to say to look off things and forget things, but, you know, it's a risk. This all is a risk. It was a risk before he cheated on you. The risk was you getting hurt. But also, also, love always comes with a risk. But at the same time, love, there's also, you can gain your soulmate or something. You don't you never know the outcome. So you always give these relationships your all. And you just have to accept. You just have to accept that if you take an L, you take an L. But you definitely, you definitely do not want to push a nice guy away thinking that he cheated on you. He didn't, thinking that he's out here disrespecting you. Don't accuse him of anything. What is done in the dark will come to the motherfucking light. Period. What's done in the dark will come to the light. You, I'm telling you, you do not have to look. Trust in the process. Believe in God. What you, anything that is done in the dark will come to light. Well, you guys, I'm done rambling on this video. Um, I'm going to wash this makeup off. And wash this makeup off. <laughs> and I'm going to get in the bed. So... Thank you guys for watching the video. Like and subscribe. And I hope that I help you guys with something. And I hope I help you guys with these tips. And if you would like to see my current makeup routine. Right now I'm a little glowy. Because I've been out in the weather. 
But you guys, thank you for watching this video. And if you can please hit that like and subscribe button and comment some content that you guys would like to see out of me. And just please stay flawless.